Alright, so before to try our REST API, uh, let's do some changes here in the application properties. So I have here a uh, few properties just to copy and paste to do this in a quick way. But uh, let me explain you uh, what it does, each of these properties. So the first one is to enable some color, let's say, in the console to be more easier to read the error, the warnings, the info. Um, the second one, which is spring that data source, if for specify where our uh, database is, basically. In this case, we are using uh, JDBC, which is the, the protocol, with an H2 uh, database. Uh, we can use H2 in the memory mode, but we will lose our data uh, each time that the the server is restart. But uh, if we want, we we could create a a file to store the the DB, right? So uh, I'm using here my user home slash Kotlin tutorial slash DB, right? Um, you can specify as well the, the username and the password. For this particular case, remember that we are using a special kind of database. If you already have some database, just put here uh, the configuration that you need. Um, this property is um, how Ibernet must handle the creation of the schema. Um, probably you already have some database uh, in the some tables in the database and you don't want to recreate everything with the metadata that we put here in the person class because here we are telling uh, to Ibernet okay we have the, a, ta a table which is person we have few columns we have an ID we have a sequence generator and so on so so, for instance, here we had, uh, I forgot to put here the, uh, we create the, the generator, right? But I didn't, I, I'm not using it here, so let's put uh, generate value. Uh, let's use a strategy of the type sequence. And uh, I need to specify uh, which is the generator, uh, which is person. Uh, this one over here, person sequence. Uh, I have to put generator. Uh, so sorry for uh, for this. Uh, I forget to put the generic value. But going going back to the application, uh, this will tell to Ibernet what to do. So I want to delete everything and recreate it, or I just want to update or or maybe you don't want to do anything I will choose the update and this property are for the login so let's say that you want to see what is, ha what, what is happening with your database you want to see the queries so basically uh, to enable that you need to specify the path of the library so basically here we are saying okay show me the queries and show me uh, the binding of the params. So let's run this again. Now we have uh, the color. Uh, we can see here that is bootstrapping the Spring Data JPA. Um, we have our application running in the port 8080. Uh, we have an H2 console available uh, with this pad. Let me copy this. This is the same as, as we have here. Um, what else? We can see here that it's creating a table person and a sequence. So let's go back to the console and see what do we have here. So it's 8080 slash h2 console. Uh, I need to copy and paste here the um, URL, username and password. And here we are in our database. We have here the person table. Uh, we have the sequence here. 
which is a special kind of table to hold just a like a counter for our ID. So let's go back to our postman and let's create some queries. Um, I mean HTTP request. So the first one is the find all, which is a get to this URL. Uh, we don't have data yet, so it will return just an empty empty list. Uh, let's create um, a record to this database, which uh, is just a person with name Susie and no no last name. We have here our our first record. Let's go back to the database, rerun the query. We have here our record. Um, let's create another one, same name. Uh, let's create. Uh, we have now the second one. Let's create another one, but with last name. Uh, let's put something uh, just to see if, if this works. We have now the the third one. Let's rerun. Uh, sorry, uh, the query. We have three entities now, three records. Um, let's go back to the uh, find all. We have now the the whole list. Uh, let's try the find by ID. Let me try with the ID three. Uh, we we saw we we are seeing now the that record particularly of the person. Um, let's try to update, for instance, the the entity with ID one. Let's try. Uh, let's see the whole list again, and now we have the first record and the third one with a uh, last name and let's try to delete uh, the person with ID2 which is a delete method and uh, let's try again to see everything as uh, we can see it's working uh, we can go right here to the console and see uh, the SQL query we can see here that uh, the framework is calling the sequence first to get an ID, then it's create the insert. Uh, we have the update here. We have the delete here. We can see we can see the the work calls, and uh, and so on. Let let's see what happens if I try to update an entity with an with an unconsistent ID. We will see an error, right? with the whole stack trace here which is a, a bad thing so let's try to uh, create something called uh, advice to handle uh, that kind of errors so let's create something like error handle uh, resource let's use a new annotation which is controller advice that will tell the framework that this class will handle uh, some exception in the uh, web layer. Um, let's create a method to handle uh, the legal state and let's put here an this kind of exceptions and uh, we need to specify that this method will handle that kind of exception with the exception uh, sorry exception handle annotation and we must specify uh, the type the class type of that uh, exception here so let's return here just a, a response entity uh, with the code of the bad request and for the body, uh, let's create another DTO. Let's create something like uh, error, error response, right? And this will be a data class as well. And let's put here something like title, which is going to be on a string uh, with something by default like but uh, request. We can put some message here, which is on a string and maybe we need the uh, the date uh, the time which is a local date time and let's call the by default the that now method to get the current uh, date time so uh, let's go back here and create a an error response 
and uh, let's put just the message uh, from the exception, right? And let's change the the return of the of this method, right? So uh, let's um, reveal the changes, and uh, let's see what happens if I try that method again. We can see that it's being handled by our controller advice. So we have now a fancy way to handle exceptions and don't show the stack trace to the user. So once again remember the whole idea here is just to create a simple um, REST API to show you uh, walking through with the Spring Boot framework, framework and the Kotlin language. So remember the main concept here, uh, we have a bunch of annotations, but basically each annotation uh, has a role. Remember we have the controller advice for this kind of, of a section handler. Um, we have the REST controller and the mappings to the web layer. Uh, for the DAO we have Spring Data, which is a fancy and easier way to uh, create an interface to our database. We have the service layer with the service annotation and we have here a bunch of autoware uh, being doing by the by the framework. Uh, we have a, a couple of things about Kotlin that we are saw in, in the previous uh, videos. Uh, it's quite similar to Java so I hope that uh, this tutorial helps you to to have a uh, an easy an easy starting, let's say, uh, with the framework and the Kotlin language. See you.